all of us from Luxembourg are most honored for having you today, for doing this, coming over and remember those who fought us more than 70 years ago. And please welcome with me today, with all our hearts, Mr. Bernie Bluestein, who is a veteran of the Ghost Army. Welcome. When I thought back five years ago, when Patrick Kurt came to my office, it was a dark winter night, and he said, well, there is an American in my office <laughs> talking about some ghost army, which was fighting here in Wetterberg during World War II. And, well, I thought, well, what were you smoking? <laughs> Today we honor American GIs who never launched an attack, never defended a position, and rarely, if ever, fired at the enemy. Yet these soldiers played a crucial role in the defeat of Hitler's army and the liberation of Luxembourg. Their accomplishments were kept secret for more than 50 years after World War II, which is why this is the first ever historical marker in all of Europe that we put up to try to tell their story. The spot where we are standing was the site of the phony 6th Armored Headquarters. In the woods across the street, they were impersonating the 9th Armored Infantry. Up on the road to Ludeldans was a fake tank battalion, so spread out over a whole area here. If we could travel back in time to that day, what would we see? The woods would be alive with activity as soldiers impersonated the 6th Armored Division. We might catch sight of an inflatable tank in the woods. I think I catch sight of one now. <laughs> Military police with counterfeit 6th armored shoulder patches would be guarding the intersections. Bernie was one of the soldiers who made those shoulder patches. It is my pleasure to be here with American filmmaker Rick Beyer to unveil the Ghost Army historical marker, which commemorates the bravery and ingenuity of the soldiers from the remarkable 23rd unit here in Bettenberg. It is also a privilege to be here with Mr. Bernie Bluestein. It was a surprise to me to get to know that I was going to get to meet a Ghost Army veteran today, so it makes it especially special, so thank you, sir. And let me also thank Mayor Zemet and the Commune of Bettenberg for supporting this project from the beginning. So let me finally express my gratitude to Mr. Beyer and the city of Bettenberg who have stepped up to support this important cause. Had the Germans seen through the Ghost Army's deceptions, they might have been able to break through and attack Patton's forces from behind possibly changing the course of history for the worse. The Ghost Army historical marker commemorates the efforts of the brave soldiers who contributed to the liberation of Europe from Nazi tyranny and celebrates also their creativity and imagination. So, from the U.S. Embassy, who are proud to have played a small part in remembering the triumph of the Ghost Army, Operation Bettenberg, thank you and may we never forget the sacrifice who lost their lives during World War II. Thank you. My name is Bernie Bluestein. I was a member of the 603rd Engineers uh, Camouflage Battalion. And uh, I was at the uh, dedication, and uh, the dedication meant so much to me. It was a very emotional thing for me. I was hoping that somebody else would be here representing the unit as well as myself. Uh, it's a shame. There are still maybe about 20 or 30 more living uh, members of the uh, 603rd, and I think they should be uh, enjoying this and uh, being out as well as I am. Um, 
Uh, this was just an emotional time. I'm mean, just absolutely filled with uh, all kinds of feelings, great feelings. My name is Arthur Shillstone. I was a member of the 23rd Headquarters Special Troops, known as the Ghost Army. We're a top secret deception unit participating in five campaigns, Normandy, Northern France, and the Ardennes, the Rhine Crossing and Central Europe. Luxembourg was our base for a large part of the war. We operated from here, joining infantry and tank units as needed. I'm 96 years old. There are not many of us left. I'm sorry there are not more here to participate in this honor. Hi, my name's Bernie Mason. I was the platoon leader of the 4th platoon of Company D, 603rd Engineer Battalion, and member of the Ghost Army. I'm so happy that there's a, going to be a historical marker in Europe to dedicate what we had done during the war because everything was kept so quiet. We were not allowed to talk about what we did. Uh, the only thing I really feel bad about is the fact that all the members of my platoon are gone now and they won't have the opportunity to appreciate what Rick Byer is doing for the Ghost Army. We, no one knows anything about us until Rick came along. And, and Rick, I want to tell you personally how much I appreciate it. I'm sorry that the guys in my platoon aren't alive today to appreciate all you've done and what's happening in Luxembourg. Uh, I'm, eight, I'm 98 years old now, not getting any younger, but I still remember the wonderful guys that I was in service with. I remember Luxembourg very well and still have some, some of the first stamps that were printed after the, after the war was over. Anyhow, uh, again, thanks a lot for these few moments for us to tell about the Ghost Army. And again, people asked me what I was most proud of, and I think I was most proud of bringing every member of my platoon back home safe and sound at the end of the war. Thanks a lot. My name is Stanley B. Nance. I am 100 years of age now, and I was in the United States military service in Europe. I was in the Signal Company Special, 23rd Headquarters Special Troops, known as the Ghost Army of the World War II. The headquarters of the 23rd Headquarters Special Troops was in Luxembourg, and now I understand that they are building a monument to recognize what the Ghost Army did and their important role in defeating the German Army. Hello, I'm Command Sergeant Major Doug Brown of the 108 Sustainment Brigade and the Illinois Army National Guard. I'm here to introduce World War II veteran, Ghost Army member, and my grandfather, Harold Flynn. I want to thank Rick Byer for <clears throat> doing this, putting a monument in Luxembourg. If I was able to, I'd be right with him now. I'd be with him but I'm in a wheelchair in a nursing home, being 94, gonna be 95. And we had half tracks and were the sound people. And we had wire recorders that Bell Laboratories perfected for us. And they uh, had Jensen speakers in three of them and metal speakers in two. I believe it was, and uh, the metal speakers, I had metal speakers, and we could build Bailey Bridges. You could hear them hammering and swearing and everything, the best recordings of building the bridges. And when they start yelling us, we'd get the heck out. Hi, my name is Gil Seltzer. I was in the, the 603rd Engineer Camouflage Battalion uh, Special, and overseas I was selected as 
adjutant of the battalion. Uh, I want to congratulate you all on the memorial at, in Luxembourg. I think it's a wonderful indication of the respect they had for the work we did. I have a little story I would like to tell you. I think it's amusing and you may enjoy it. About five or six months ago, I received a telephone call from Luxembourg. On the line was a young lady who told me that she had come, she lived in New Jersey, that she married a man from Luxembourg and now lived in Luxembourg City. She also said that she was planning to come to the U.S. very shortly after our conversation to see her parents and wondered if I would be willing to meet with her while she was here. Of course, I agreed, <coughs> and not too many weeks later, she arrived in my office and peppered me with the typical questions that I've been answering for months. She also indicated that um, she would like me to tell her my most vivid memories of Luxembourg. I told her that as an architect I was very much impressed with the architecture of that country, but to answer her question, the most vivid memory I had was of taking a shower in, that, in Luxembourg City. You know that uh, we were the first troops to occupy Luxembourg City, and we had been taking care of the grime on our bodies using a helmet full of cold water. We heard that there were municipal showers in the city, and a group of us took a truck and found our way to the bathhouse, and there I found that I could have as much hot water as I wanted, and there was no time limit. So it was about as close to heaven as I ever expect to, go, to get. When I finished my little story, this woman said to me, there are no showers and no baths in Luxembourg City. I said, that may be, but 74 years ago, the sure as hell were. That ended the meeting. But about two weeks later, I got a letter from her saying that, thanking me first for seeing her, and secondly, uh, our conversation resulted in a lot of research and search, and she finally found a marker in the city indicating that that was the location of the bathhouse which had been demolished in 1969. That's the end of the story. Good luck.